Don't you hate it when you play a game that you know could be so much better? A game that's in a genre that has never really reached its full potential. A genre that has relied on nostalgia fixes, remakes, never really pushing itself forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about the 3D platformer and why it should be so much more than it currently is. Hi, Estelden here. If you enjoy 3D platformers, if you like jumping about, doing all the puzzles, if you like the games I talk about, perhaps you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. New Super Lucky's Tale is a game I'd had my eye on for a while, and when I eventually got round to it now that it's been released on PC, I've got to say that I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I didn't rush out and pay full price on the Nintendo Switch, because it's really reminded me why this drama has never gotten mainstream attention since the 64 days. This game and others like it these days just feel so safe and like they're not trying to do anything interesting to advance the genre. It's like the people who make them pick them up and go, right, let's throw a lot of the same old things in and let's call it a day, let's release it more than once by the way, let's release it multiple times at full price and here you go, here's your adventure. It's just not that interesting. I can tell you when I was playing the Banjo games back when, I really imagined like, wow, in 5, 10 years, what are we going to be playing then? These games are going to be truly amazing. And honestly, like the only mainstream 3D platformer aside from Odyssey, that's an elephant in the room, Mario Odyssey, which I will come to later on. But I mean, when I think of mainstream platformers now, I actually think of things like Assassin's Creed with all those collectibles that they used to have in the games. That feels more recent as a mainstream title than pretty much anything else we've actually gotten in the real traditional 3D platformer genre. When I look at Super Lucky's Tale, it just lacks like a wow factor, something that makes it unique. When I look at Banjo-Kazooie, it had all the quirky characters, those mumbly voiceovers. When I look at Crash, it had the intriguing design of not just being a, a traditional 3D platformer like Kazooie, Mario 64. It had you running like front ways, avoiding these rocks that were flying at you, dinosaurs were chasing you. It had so much variety. This game does not really have any variety. It's pretty much just some worlds, they're kind of open. You collect these coins that really don't serve a purpose aside from buying cosmetics that you don't really care about anyway. The game lasts about seven hours. Like, what am I going to dress up my character for? It's going to be over by the time I find my next hat and I try it on and see what it's like. The other side to the game is that they'll throw you in like these 2.5D levels that really feel more simple than New Super Mario Brothers or even 3D Land. There's just nothing exciting here. It's, it doesn't feel like what a kid's game, in my opinion, should be. A kid's game should feel like a really good Pixar movie, like a Toy Story or The Incredibles. I want it to be something where a kid can absolutely enjoy it, have some fun. It's not going to be like overly challenging. But a boomer like myself can absolutely enjoy it too. So this game overall, it's not bad, but it's not going to be something that 3D platform enthusiasts have been waiting for all this time. We've not just wanted Banjo-Kazooie, like the remake. We've wanted the next step. You look at what CD Projekt Red are doing for fans of Witcher 3. A lot of people love the game, but then they look at Cyberpunk and it does really look like they're at least trying to do something new and exciting. It's not just the safe follow-up, which they absolutely could have done. There's almost no reason they couldn't have just done Witcher 4 and everyone would have been really excited. Could it have just been more of the same, a few more fancy graphics? People would have absolutely ate it up. But they've tried to do something that they think will break the boundaries, and whether they do or not, we'll have to see, but at least they're giving it a bit of a shot. 3D platformers never really had that, I would say. I think the closest that they came to it was probably Nintendo's Mario Galaxy, and while it wasn't an open-world 3D platformer, at least they did try and do something brand new. It's just a shame it was on the fucking Wii, which really ruined it in my opinion. I mean, collecting those fucking stars around, oh, well, I'm going on getting these stars, they've got almost no purpose at all in the game, but yeah, let's get them, let's chase them. It didn't really do it for me, and I'll tell you what, to get a Galaxy port on the Switch, which has been rumoured, that would absolutely make my fucking day. I'd love to play it with traditional controls. But there is a reason that the drama is at this point, because I don't want to single out New Super Lucky's Tale. My point here is not that, alright, this game's by the numbers, it sucks, don't bite. That's not my point. I'm playing this, I will beat it, I'm having some fun with it. It's, it's fine for what it is. I'm just disappointed that we're not at that next step in 2020 and we're still just playing catch up with remakes, Spyro, Crash, all of that. Crash is getting a new one and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But even still, we've been relying on those remasters for so, so long and everyone's been afraid to really try something new. 
And the reason for that goes all the way back to the 90s, long before I was bitter about the modern day AAA industry, bitter about 3D platformers and whatever else, refusing to grow up and actually behave like an adult, I'm still playing these fucking games. So people were playing Banjo-Kazooie, they were playing Mario 64, if you had a PlayStation you were probably playing Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, all of those, and you were having a great time. The series, the genre, it was at its greatest point, and those developers didn't see any way to go wrong. The problem is the developers hit a wall essentially, and that wall started with Donkey Kong 64. Now people say that that game in particular was the reason that 3D platforming died, I think that's just like an unconfirmed myth that's a little bit baseless. That was more the point where Rare had already hit their creative peak. So everyone was thinking that Rare could do absolutely no wrong. They had Banjo, Banjo Tooie, forgetting the platformers. They still had Goldeneye, Perfect Dark. There was just nothing they could do. They couldn't put a foot wrong. And then Donkey Kong 64 came out. Now remember, because a lot of people like to use a recency bias for these things, but back when that game came out, everyone did really like it. It was hard to find people who really criticised it. It was only years later that people reflected back on it and said, you know fucking what, playing as five Kongs, having to retread the same ground every five minutes to pick up another useless red banana, it wasn't that fun. And reflecting back on it, people started to think, right, that was one of Rare's last great games. And they were off to Microsoft, they were grabbing people by the ghoulies, they were hitting people with fucking pinatas and building farms. They never really recaptured those glory days. So a lot of people attributed it to the fact that 3D platformers had died. But if you look back at like the PS2, Sony was still doing them. They had Jack and Daxter, really, really good game. It actually did feel like they were trying to advance a few systems and push that genre forward. But then GTA came out and Sony saw where the gravy train was running. They followed it at full speed and they knew kids games weren't really where it was at anymore because a lot of the people who played on the PS1, they'd started to grow up a bit. They were teenagers now. They didn't want to be fucking around with bears and birds and dragons like Spyro. They wanted something new that targeted teenagers and young adults and that's really where GTA came in. And you can see its influence on Jack 2 which copied a lot of those trends, started to steer away from the open world 3D platformer genre, and that's where things really started to shift. Even if you look at the GameCube, Nintendo not always known until now where they're fucking doing mobile games, but back then they weren't really known for copying trends and chasing all of those things around all the time. They released a pretty middling 3D Mario game in my opinion, that being Mario Sunshine. It was kind of unfinished, they had to rush it out so that the GameCube actually had some sellability. It had something that gave you a reason to buy the console. And that was pretty much the end of the mainstream 3D platformer. After that, there were a lot of like really mediocre attempts to do the same thing, like Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. It's, uh, it's a real shame because a lot of these games I'm talking about are made by Australian teams. I'm Australian, so come on. I mean, we've got Hollow Knight, but give us some other good shit. It's a bit sad. And then it stagnated. We got nothing. Finally, 2D platformers started to see a resurgence, and that's where all the focus went. It is a lot easier, I would say, to develop a 2D platformer. There's a working template to go off. But when you look at 3D platformer, it's hard to point at a game and say, right, do that. If you do that well, it's going to work. Because Banjo-Kazooie was still a product of the time. It's one of my favourite games ever. I'm a huge enthusiast. So I used to be on like websites looking up secrets in the game years later as well. Even going into like the mid-2000s, I was obsessed with it. But even I can say that Banjo-Kazooie is probably not something you want to work off as a template. Ukulele, prove that. Everyone was excited for the game, but I think a lot of people were excited by the idea of it. Hadn't played Banjo-Kazooie 2 in many years, and even though Ukulele, it was objectively a lot more mediocre in many departments, I don't think it was that different. I think a lot of people expected something different with Ukulele. They expected something like brand new, really grand, something groundbreaking. And when they got what was essentially an N64 game again, they, they felt like they'd been slapped in the face a little bit, like, oh, this isn't what we were promised. No, it was. Like, that is what you asked for. The Kickstarter, they said, like, this is gonna be pretty much just Banjo-Kazooie head for head. Like, look at the fucking characters. Yuka, Laylee, Trousers the Snake. There's nothing innovative going on here. Here it is. And I'll say that some of the level design's not really as good, but overall, I don't think that it's as bad as people kind of claim, at least when you compare it to what it was trying to be. So I think it was just that fact that the genres never evolved. There's nothing you can point at and say, this is how to do open world 3D platforming. 
There's plenty of great linear 3D platformers, Mario Galaxy like I mentioned. It did some really fantastic things that a lot of other games haven't really tried to emulate really at all, which is a surprise because I would say that is the linear 3D platformer you could kind of go for. Even when we look at the Kazooies and the Tooies, which a lot of people would say, no, 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 that is the template, you should go off that. But if you play Tooie, the issue with it is it comes across like there's these hub worlds with mini games in them. And that's basically the worlds. The platforming side of things disappears a little bit. And I think that's what happens when you just try and do too much all at once. When you've got all of these moves from the first game, when you're trying to add new things in, the actual platforming element gets almost impossible because whatever challenge you give to the player, they've got so many tools in their arsenal that it gets very difficult to actually give them something that they just can't do or they can't overcome with ease. That is the problem with the Banjo games. I think the way to get 3D platformers right is just to look at the, the best things from each of them. I think there's great things in each of them individually. Even Mario Sunshine, it had those linear little levels that were inside the game where you do like a great linear 3D platforming puzzle, and then you go out and do something that's a bit more open world again. I think combining the two is something that could really work. What I want to say is that when it comes to learning moves, I want them to be really hard to get. So instead of like in ukulele where you just go into a world, yep, there's Trousers of the Snake, I'll go and learn all my moves, didn't have to look for him. I want to be doing like a, like a really hard boss battle to earn it. I want to do a really hard platforming challenge to earn it. And then I want to go back into the open world and I want it to be designed a little bit differently. I don't want it to just be, all right, I can just go absolutely anywhere I want. And it feels like you're just ticking off a checklist almost. Like you get into the world, you look around and you go, right, will I go there first? Yep, I'll go there and I'll just circle my way around the map doing everything. I'd like it to be a little bit more designed in such a way that the developers kind of push you in different directions. Even though I might be able to get up, say, this tough hill or I might be able to do a really tough platforming challenge, It'll be easier if I find this other skill first. So the developers point you towards going in another direction to learn a various skill in the level, and then they bring me back and now I can overcome this challenge a little bit easier. That way it'd still feel like there's some direction in the game rather than just giving you a sandbox where there's, there's no real progression in it. And I think that can be the problem sometimes. Playing ukulele, especially like that casino level, it just didn't feel like it was designed. It felt like they went, right, let's make a casino. Let's do all that. Oh, now we actually need to make a game around it and put some content in it. I don't think that's the way to make a 3D platformer because then it just starts to feel too cumbersome and it turns people off. Someone who's not really experienced with 3D platformers gets into something like that and goes, right, where is the open element really helping me here? It just feels like this would be better if we made it linear. And now you look at what the developer for Ukulele are doing, and they made pretty much a 2D platformer. It's really good, but it is kind of sad that they felt like they had to move on from the genre because it wasn't working and the reception to it was quite poor. So for me, progression, more design in the world, pushing me in certain directions because that's going to help me, but also giving me the choice. So not forcing me to do it because then it might as well be linear, but just feeling a little bit more designed in that way. I think they can take a lot of influence from Metroidvanias that have been so popular over the last few years. You play something like Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Hollow Knight, all of those games, there's a lot to love in them. And the progression systems in those games, I think, could actually do really well in a 3D platformer environment. That's a direction I'd love to see them going, more of those. We do have Metroid Prime 4 coming, but I mean, for fuck's sake, like, it's going to be on, like, the Switch 2 by the time it comes out. So I'd love to see something come a little bit sooner. That'd be really awesome. The elephant in the room I mentioned, though, Mario Odyssey, because I can have this conversation, I can talk about how the genre is stagnated, but hang on, we've got a game that has sold like millions and millions of copies on the Switch, it's a 3D platformer, it's open, why the fuck doesn't that count? Well, it does count, but there's a few issues with it, and one of them is the fact that any Mario game is pretty much going to sell, it doesn't matter what it is. And in my opinion, 3D Mario hasn't really had an identity across its run. If you look at 64, you look at Sunshine, Galaxy, 3D World, and now here we are. There's just so much difference in tone surrounding those games. The actual design is all very, very different. And I think it's okay, but there is every chance that Nintendo look at feedback. They look at the design around the Switch 2 and what they're doing next. And they go back to that linear Mario style with 3D World or Galaxy. They go back down that road. And I think that's okay, but there is every chance that Odyssey is like a one-off. And we might even get an Odyssey 2, but when we get to the Switch 2, they go back to the linear style 3D Mario and the open world style kind of disappears. My opinion of Odyssey, it's, it is a very good game. 
And I gotta say that like I picked it up day one. I bought a Switch just to play it because I'm like, finally, we're back to the open style Mario. This is gonna be like the kick in the teeth that 3D platformers have really needed. My issues though with it is it does suffer from that repetitiveness. You go into a world and you know exactly what you're going to get because it's all, it's very cooker cutter. It's all sort of just built around like a checklist again. So it's like I go into one world, right, where's Cooper? I know I'm going to race him. I'm going to do the race. Not really exciting content. You're just going around the level that's already there and you've already jumped around in numerous times. When I look at a checklist and it's like, all right, a new boss battle, that is a bit more exciting. I know they've got to design the boss. It's going to have mechanics. It's going to be something new. That's completely fine. But it's more those small things that start to get a little bit on your nerves. And when you start trying to go for 100% completion and doing everything in the game, that's when you start to get a little bit sick of it. I think there's a lot of people like myself who plan to do everything in Odyssey, but we just got burned out. I don't think it's a matter of, oh, it was too long. It was just the activities within it started to get a little bit less exciting overall. And I think it did lack from less interesting content areas when it came to getting the moons. There were too many of them. I would have much rather seen, even going back to the Banjo-Kazooie style of like 10, maybe 15 main moons to get across the levels. And then maybe just having a few scattered collectibles that had a little bit more purpose than just turning them all in at once. I would have rather had more interesting variety in what I collect around the levels than just the moons. And then that's pretty much it. There's nothing else. When I go back to Banjo-Kazooie, you did have the nodes. They had a purpose. You had to open those doors. You could collect the honeycombs, which increased your health. And it had a bit of a progression aspect because now I can survive more. There's more risks I can take in the world. It gave a reason behind collecting these things rather than just because or getting that achievement or whatever they might be there. Mario Odyssey, fantastic game. The things I mentioned are minor flaws, but I just don't want us to get excited and think, right, that's it. Open world 3D platformers, they're coming back. And then Mario moves in another direction again and we're back to square one. Because these other games, whether it's a hat in time, new Super Lucky's Tale, I don't think they're really pushing things forward. They're not bringing in anyone new because they're simply not that exciting. They're just retreading old ground. Some of these games, like I had in time, that took like, what, four or five years to make? I remember that I kickstarted that project originally. And by the time it actually came out, I'd forgotten the email address that I'd signed up to on the Kickstarter. I didn't care. I bought the game anyway. I played it. I was really excited. And it was good, but I've just never had that feeling like this is the next step above Banjo-Kazooie. This is where 3D platformers were meant to go. If we don't get to that point with some game somehow, I don't think this drama is ever going to be mainstream again. And everyone's just going to see 2D platformers as the better half. And we'll be stuck with new Super Lucky's Tales, little indie games, little things like that. That might give us a little bit of like an entree, but we're never going to get the main course. And that's what I'm kind of worried about. We might be getting Crash 4. We might even get another Spyro game. But they've got a lot to live up to now because everyone has just played the remasters. And if the new ones fall flat and they're not as good, people are just going to see the drama as something you just can't really achieve in. The developers, the publishers, they're going to go, eh, it's too risky. Making that remaster was so much cheaper. It was way more profitable. Profitable. Let's just find some other old gems that we can polish off. Let's not bother with the new stuff. So that is a concern. I just hope the developers look towards something new. They don't try and chase like modern game design stuff, but they look at what will actually work, what will actually improve the old games and bring them to a new audience. Make them exciting, not just for the kids, but also the boomers. People have been waiting a long, long time and they're still playing Banjo-Kazooie. They're still playing Spyro. They want the new thing. Do that and you may actually win over a new audience and you'll win the mainstream as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again, and bye-bye.